when we talk about remnants we're talking about the leftovers there's always something very special about the leftovers God has always been concerned with the leftovers I did not even put these in my spirit I'm just flowing right now I don't even know where he's going with all of this okay I did not know what I was gonna say but I knew I needed to do a live and just now I didn't know what to type as the subject and he told me to type something and I typed it that's what you saw dear remnant and now I am flowing I did not rehearse anything that I'm about to say right now okay good so God has always been very concerned with the leftovers there's something about God that likes to use those things that are uh, rejected unwanted left behind left out am i speaking to someone right now hallelujah understand this that oftentimes it's the individuals who other people deem as unworthy they are the ones he moves upon and uses to do exploits in his name i don't know who that is for but please receive this in your spirit if you're feeling downcast because of something that someone has said to you or because of a decision that was made and you feel like you were blindsided or something understand this all things work together for good to them that love God and who are the called according to his purpose if you love him and if you know you were called according to his perfect purpose for your life understand that everything Hallelujah, the bits and pieces, the portions, hallelujah, this side and that side, hallelujah, the ups, the downs, all things, when you put them together, the combined total will eventually be to your benefit. Amen, and you got to understand that. The word says so. It's not even Shadeen who says so, but it's the word that says so. So as you know, Come Sunday, Sunday, September 10, please write this down. We will be assembled in the Marilock Hall at St. John's University in Queens, New York for a worship experience. Amen. Service starts at 10.30 a.m. Now. I don't know what the Lord is doing, but all I say to him is, God, just use me. Any way you want to use me, anywhere, anyhow, I'm available. Amen. What I'm mindful of and aware of, though, is this. That we have reached such a critical point in the preparation of the or for the coming of Christ that the move of God is very deliberate and strategic at this time I mean it has always been but when we look at the body of Christ collectively not just on an individual basis now but when we look at God's heart toward his church the whole body we know that he has intensified a lot of things spiritually. And as things are intensified in the kingdom, we're getting us ready for his coming and getting all his people, those who were marked, those who were predestined, etc., getting them aligned. We also know that the enemy is also working over time to combat or challenge whatever God has in store for his people understand this that now more than ever there are thousands of things okay a plethora of things that are competing for your attention and you have to be so focused now more than ever 
you will go on a virtual space and there's something trying to get your attention. You leave that space and you'll try to do something ordinarily and you'll find that other things are trying to get your attention. And we have to be so careful in how we attend to these things that seem to be so demanding because they are here to rob us of our intimacy with the Lord. They're here to rob us of prayer time, worship time, time that is supposed to be spent in the word. So let us understand that we're in a very critical time and it's almost like it's an extreme time. It's either you're extremely on the right or extremely on the left, okay? Because it's like the warfare is so intense. The kingdom of darkness is saying, I want you to be all mine. The kingdom of God is saying, I want you as well. So there is this tug of war almost that is taking place. And the kingdom of darkness is using so many subtle things to divert our attention. And so we must be careful. So I do know that one of the things that the Lord will be doing in this time is to use the anointing that he has so released on this vessel of his to help his people, especially the remnants, to refocus. Amen? I don't know what he's doing, but I, I sense very strongly that that is a part of it. That is one of the tears of it because it's much needed at this time. I also sense very strongly that a lot of young people are waking up. He's just waking them up from all over. And these are not necessarily people who have been churched. These are not people who were raised in church. These are not people who have, you know, parents as pastors, etc. No, he's raising up a people who he knows from before he even formed them, okay? And he knows their hearts. And I wanna tell you that I am really excited to meet some of these amazing people God has reserved for such a time as this. And I, I believe much of these individuals are pretty young. And I'm not saying that he's not raising up and waking up seniors, but I wanna say that if you discern the times in which we are, you'll realize that he's doing something among young people. Never have I seen young people so greedy for the presence of the Lord like I'm seeing now. So I know that he'll be doing something with the youth at the Marilock Hall as well as we gather there uh, for his purpose. I think he'll be drawing them from all over, okay? And again, it's not something that the flesh will participate in doing because we cannot draw. The Bible says that when we lift him up, that's when he draws. If he ain't being lifted up on the pulpit, nobody's going to come to that assembly. Listen, understand this, that when you are in a church, if the pastor, minister, apostle, bishop, preacher, teacher, whoever it is, who is on the pulpit, is not lifting up God, is lifting up himself or herself, their family, whoever, whatever, as long as it's not God being lifted up, that church will not grow. It cannot grow. Okay? Because the pull, unless it's a demonic church, and he has used this facade, of course, we know Satan has his tactics, his ways of getting people to fill spaces, to make it look like it's God, but it's not God. He's not a part of it. If it's the flesh that is being exalted, or it's man that is being lifted up, he is not in it. Okay? Once we step on that platform, in the name of God, it is the God whose name we are lifting or whose name we are calling that should be magnified in that area. Everything else that exalts itself is going to be, hallelujah, a challenge, not just a challenge, but a hindrance, a hindrance to the pulling that God wants to do, a hindrance to the release of his glory on levels and in dimensions in which he wishes for them to be experienced by his people. So I know that there will be a pulling. So please make sure you, 
well I, I am so careful in how I say this because I know I, I might not know all that he's doing but I think I understand to a great extent where he's going there is a specific kind of individuals he's waking up right now and I'm anticipating them okay I could say so much but what I will say is this I'm looking for people to come as their true self come as you are hallelujah I've oftentimes heard a saying you can't scale the fish before you catch it. You have to catch it first. Amen. I look forward to all these people coming. Let there not be an excuse for not coming into the house of the Lord when he calls you. Do not say in your heart, oh, I don't have a church closed. You don't have, there's no such thing. Okay. Wear what you have. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Don't try to overdo anything. You're not there to please anybody else but God. And we understand that I cannot expect that people will change if God is not there to change them. One has to come to him first for complete transformation to occur. And so I want you to know that in this space, the Lord will be dealing with a lot of things. He'll be breaking down some barriers that folks have built up over the years with their own doctrines. I believe that many individuals will be impregnated by the Holy Spirit in their spiritual wombs. But these individuals that I feel the Lord is pulling to me are individuals who, who have some great massive callings on their lives. I cannot explain this in details and tell you you know from whence came this inspiration i'm just telling you what i'm sensing strongly in the spirit uh, i think it's a specific um kind it's a specific tier of individuals it's a group of individuals who you will not know who they are by looking at them you cannot sense them. If you're not spiritually alert, you will not be able to tell. You can't look at them and know. You have to be so deeply rooted and so spiritually discerning that that's the only way you will understand who it is that you're looking at. So, Father, we thank you for what is to come. Now, just a reminder for those of you who will be coming on Sunday to worship at 1030 a.m., the Marilock Hall is on St. John's University. It's on the property of that institution. You are asked to enter the premises through gate number six. Hopefully, I'll have enough volunteers, males, who can help to direct you to where the entrance of the facility is. Um, we're working on having signs not sure if the signs will be ready for Sunday but if we don't have signs we ask that those male figures who can help to direct individuals to the right place who are coming I hope that you can reach out and say something that you're available the address for this premises is 8000 Utopia Parkway 8000 Utopia Parkway, Queens, New York, 11439, St. John's University. You're looking for the Marilock Hall. I understand that they have quite a number of auditoriums. So you're looking for a specific one called the Marilock Hall. And it is best if you enter the premises through gate number six. So please make a note of that. That's Sunday, September 10 at 10.30. That's when the Lord will be meeting with specific individuals. I don't know who you are, but of course, he will draw. Whoever comes, I know these are the ones he has pulled to be there. 
Amen. So remember, always pray before you enter any meeting. Okay? In the name of the Lord. Always pray before you get there. Make this a habit. I never try to go to church without praying to the Lord and asking Him to do certain things or to ensure that certain things are aligned because I don't want to go into a space that is toxic spiritually or a space that is dry or a space where I am not going to be edified. So make sure you pray. Amen? Before you come. When you pray, you're telling the Holy Spirit that you are ready. You're telling the Holy Spirit that you are prepared. You're telling the Holy Spirit that you have an empty container, which is yourself, and you're coming for him to pour out into you. All right? So please make a note of that. Uh, I think I have announced on Tuesday that I'll see you on Thursday, which is tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, which is the same as 7.30 p.m. Jamaica time. So please make sure you turn on your notifications, set your alarms if you must. We will be streaming on Sunday, by the way, and I'm really excited about that. So you might want to put that in your calendar or set your alarms for that time, 10.30 a.m. on Sunday. All right? Please be prayerful, those of you who are moved to be there. Okay? Be prayerful because we do not want to miss what the Lord has in store for us individually and collectively. In Jesus' name, God bless you, everyone. Hallelujah.